Doctor, thanks very much for your time. Our topic is hypertension, otherwise known as high blood pressure, and so the first question is, what is high blood pressure? How do you define it? Well, high blood pressure is defined as a level of greater than 140 for the systolic blood pressure, or the top number of the blood pressure, and 90 on the bottom. If it's greater than 90 of the bottom number, or the diastolic blood pressure, that's the true definition of high blood pressure. What causes high blood pressure? What causes it to become elevated? Well, there's a variety of different um, reasons why patients have high blood pressure. And honestly, f for most patients with what we call essential hypertension, we don't really know the cause, but there's a lot of different factors that go into play, such as genetics, family history. Also, if you're a smoker, if you're overweight, those type of things can also contribute to patients having high blood pressure. What are the symptoms of high blood pressure and why is it sometimes referred to as the silent killer? It's silent. That's exactly right. That's why um, we call it the silent killer because most of the time there are no symptoms at all. Most patients who have high blood pressure do not know and have no symptoms at all until they have something drastic such as a heart attack which causes chest pain or a stroke or some other type of problem. What happens to people who have high blood pressure, and you may have just touched on this, what happens to mm -hmm. people who have, blood pr high, have high blood pressure who either don't know it or choose not to treat it? Well, that's exactly, you know, what we were talking about. It, it will cause problems that affects pretty much everything in the body, but most, more specifically the heart. Um, it causes things like cardiovascular disease as well as congestive heart failure. It can cause problems with the kidneys and the way the kidneys function, the eyes. Um, as well as possibly the brain with strokes. How do you treat high blood pressure? The treatment of high blood pressure is usually treated in, in twofold ways. The first one being lifestyle uh, changes. We just talked about the fact that smoking and being overweight can contribute to high blood pressure. So looking at those kind of things that patients can do, changing their diet, um, making sure they are within a normal weight range, quitting smoking, limiting their alcohol. Those are the kind of things patients can do themselves to help lower their blood pressure. And then there's several different types of medications that their doctor may prescribe as well. With respect to the medications, are they well tolerated? Most blood pressure medications are very well tolerated. Um, some of them do have some fairly mild side effects, but most blood pressure medicines are very well tolerated. What's the connection between salt and high blood pressure? Well, salt, most people think, or um, the analogy is that salt causes water to also be in the blood vessels. Um, so when you add salt and water, it causes what we call increased fluid throughout the body, which causes the pressure in the arteries to be elevated, therefore causing high blood pressure. So you're simply increasing the volume? Exactly, okay. within, the, within the body. What are some of the salty foods that we eat that might surprise us? Well, most people, when they think of salty food, they know that potato chips, popcorn, those type of things are salty and that they should avoid them. But some things they don't think about that they think may be healthy for them are things like canned soup. Um, some things such as olives are packaged and are high in salt. Um, there are other... Um, a lot of prepackaged foods and, and quick meals that we eat and, and that are prepackaged that we buy in the grocery store have high salt contents as well. A lot of the frozen foods and things like that are very high in salt. Let's talk about kids. Kids get high blood pressure and if so, how does it affect them short term and long term? Yes, children can develop high blood pressure. We used to only see that in children with underlying heart disease or kidney disease. However, now we're seeing it more and more often in children who are simply overweight or obese. So it's becoming more of a problem in, in childhood and early adolescence. It affects them in a variety of different ways. One, we know that having high blood pressure does affect their brain function and how well they're able to concentrate uh, and learn. More long-term studies need to be done to see the long-term effects that that's going to have uh, on these children, but having to take medications um, and just the, the fact that they're dealing with that also affects them psychologically as well. And left untreated, do the same problems arise in children? Absolutely, and even earlier. Okay. 
let's say that just for the sake of discussion, I have high blood pressure. How helpful is it to have a blood pressure monitor at home and, and, and how accurate is it? Well, there's a variety of different blood pressure monitors on the market. Most of them are fairly accurate and fairly good, especially if you get a good wrist cuff or arm cuff. To make sure that it's accurate, you can always take it to your next doctor's visit and have them compare to what they're getting on their monitors as well. And I usually recommend my patients do that because it's helpful for me to know how accurate their monitor at home is. And it's helpful for me also. I appreciate having home blood pressure monitor numbers that I know are accurate because I can better assess their true high blood pressure on a regular daily basis and not just a one-time reading in a doctor's office. And on that, on kind of that theme, how frequently should uh, someone who's monitoring their blood pressure, how frequently should they take it and is there a better or worse time of day to do it? Usually we, we definitely want you to take it when you're relaxed in your normal state of being not when you're upset, um, frustrated, stressed um, in any way. Usually we say either first thing in the morning, maybe a few minutes after you awaken, or in the evening after you've had time to, to relax um, and settle down. Um, I usually, depending on um, my patient care, will usually ask them to monitor it at least once a week, sometimes more often than that, depending on the um, scenario. Earlier, when you mentioned a type of blood pressure, I think you said essential high blood pressure, um, which I think leads into a question. Will there ever be a, uh, a vaccine for high blood pressure? Possibly. Um, there are studies being done right now for uh, vaccines for high blood pressure, uh, specifically targeting some receptors in the kidney. Um, area that seem to be, so far, seem to be fairly safe and fairly effective, although the studies on them right now are very small and more studies will need to be done um, on larger groups of people. Very well. Doctor, thank you for your time. You're welcome.